Will Goldstein here, thekingscourt.com. Again, chance to subscribe down there and that hitting that little button in the bottom right hand corner. If you like these videos, and also uh, you can find lots, lots of links to other things that I do uh, involving music, my music books, and um, my digital albums. There's all kinds of links at this website. Um, if you're at my YouTube page, The King's Court, and also thekingscourt.com. So uh, again, continuing with uh, Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. I recommend that you buy this book. I'm just sort of paraphrasing, taking highlights out of this section. Uh, so some videos are a little bit shorter and some are longer, but none of them are very long in this series because none of his talks are very long <laughs> and I'm, they're less than what he did. So um, anyway, so tiny recap at the beginning uh, because he's, each one is a new um, talk. That's what these are based on. In the moral law, uh, there's something or somebody, uh, something from beyond the material universe that is trying to get at us. And that's, he opens with that. And so now he's going on, uh, that's been a lot in the previous videos. If you are on the wrong road, progress means doing an about turn and trying to get back on the right road and walking the right way. And he's saying that the sooner that you admit this and you go back um, and turn around and start doing the right things, uh, the, the sooner things will, you'll, you'll be able to get on, is what he says. <laughs> and uh, it's no use, you know, being pig-headed about it, as he actually uses that word. <laughs> so I'll put it in there. And refusing to admit that you make mistakes, this isn't going to get you anywhere. The idea is that you want to figure out the right way to go, and if you go on the wrong way, make an about turn. And um, if they comments on the state of the world, if you look at the state of the world, it's pretty plain that humanity has made a huge number of very big bad mistakes, and they are continuing to do so. And so, if you want to get on the right track, going back and, and starting over and starting right, making good choices, is the quickest way on. Again, those are his, his words, the quickest way on. So, um, again, you know, there's, there is, as far as there being somebody or something behind the moral law, um, he says there's two bits of evidence about that somebody. <laughs> and the first one is the universe that he has made. And then he makes some comments on that. He was obviously a great art artist because the, the, this universe uh, is a uh, incredibly beautiful place and um, the second thing that he makes in regard to that is um, it's also a very dangerous and can be a very t terrifying place but then the other bit of evidence the second bit of evidence is the moral law and that has been put in our minds and he thinks that this is a better bit of evidence than the other because we have inside information <laughs> So, um, being, uh, the being behind the universe is obviously and intensely interested in our right conduct. And that basically means uh, fair play and being unselfish and, and being courageous in life and, and having faith and being honest and being truthful. Okay? And he says that we should agree that God from this is good. Um, the moral law tells you to do the right thing. And it does not seem to care uh, how painful that might be to you or dangerous or difficult it is. It just simply tells you there's a right choice and a, and a wrong choice. And it's best for you to make the right choice. So really, as far as he's gotten so far, is that he's, he's trying to get at the idea that there's a power and that this power behind the moral law is, is more like a mind. 
and and it's really no use saying that if there is this God, um, you don't need to like him or or um, you're not you're not going to bother about him. Uh, and then he goes on to say that the fact is one part of you is really on his side <laughs> and you really agree with him in the fact that you disapprove of human greed and trickery and exploitation. Now that is, unless you've turned yourself over to wickedness, then perhaps you don't. Then you want to be greedy and uh, exploit people. But for most people, whether they're Christians or not, they can uh, agree that it's it's a good idea to not have, be tr greedy or um, to exploit other people. You don't need to be. You don't even need to believe in God really to 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 go that far. We know that if there does exist some absolute goodness, that this absolute goodness must must hate a lot of what we do because we don't live up to the standards that we know that we should. And that puts us in a terrible fix, he says. Um, if the universe is not governed by an absolute goodness, then all our efforts really are hopeless. Um, and then he says, also, if it is governed by an absolute goodness, then we are making ourselves enemies to that goodness every day by the actions and the wrong decisions we make. So either way, we find ourselves in this position of hopeless. No, he does have an answer, so stay with, bear with me. So, um, goodness is either a great safety for some, or it's a great danger according to the way you react to it. Um, and he says that most of us have reacted to it in the wrong way. So, Christianity tells people to repent and promises them forgiveness if they're going to if they ask for that forgiveness but really Christianity really has nothing to say to people who do, do not know that they have done anything wrong or believe they've done anything wrong and they don't believe they need to repent and they don't feel that they need any forgiveness he says Christianity has nothing to say to those people they can just go along their way they made their choice that's it then they can wait till judgment day even if they don't believe it's coming <laughs> yeah they'll find out one way or another in the end won't they so but once you come to realize that there really is um, moral law and there really is some power behind that moral law and that unfortunately you have broken that law as I have um, then you put yourself on the wrong side of that power. So um, when you realize that y your position is really desperate, then you start to realize what and understand what the Christians are talking about. Until you get to, to that point, Christianity will just seem like foolishness to you. So Christianity offers an explanation, and this is the first time that he really gets into Christianity. He's really been building up to the word Christianity in all these videos up till now. It's everything up till now has really been based on the idea of, you know, a power, a mind behind it, which I would say a transcendental God. But he hasn't he hasn't really gotten into the word Christianity yet. So now he starts to get into that, and he says. Christianity offers an explanation about how this mind that's in the back of this moral law is also a person. So what he's saying there is a person. That means you have an impersonal mind and then you have a personal God. He's saying that Christianity offers an explanation that this power behind it all is also a personal God. And it tells you... Um, 
the demands of this law, and it also tells you that neither you nor I can meet these demands because we can't be perfect, okay? That's because of the fall. It tells you how those demands have been met on our behalf and how God himself became a man to save man from the disapproval of God. Christian religion is a thing um, of comfort, he says. And, but he says it doesn't really begin in comfort. It begins in dismay. And if you're trying uh, to get comfort without first going through dismay, he says that's no use. He says, if you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. 